Well, it seems like it has happened. BcacheFS might be getting thrown out of the Linux kernel. Let's follow through what happened and how this all unfolded. Buckle up as this is going to be a wild one and we got a lot to go through. This all started with Kent, the lead maintainer of BcacheFS, submitting a large pull request, which included a few fixes for the Linux 6.16 RC3 release cycle. But the main point of contention here was a new experimental recovery feature called Journal Rewind. Linus didn't seem too happy about this new feature being added during one of the release candidate phases or the RC releases. And what this tool did, according to Kent, is it let the entire file system be reset to an earlier point in time. Basically, this is a disaster recovery tool as BcacheFS actually had a data loss incident that I covered in a different video recently during a file check system process where a user decided to use a flag that was a little too generous during the file check and lost some data as they didn't have any backups. Well, Kent tried to help them, and I believe this is where the tool kind of came from. So, so far, so good. But here's where things got sideways. As Linus replied to this new option called Journal Rewind, the following message, you seem to have forgotten what the point of the merge window was again. We don't start adding new features just because you found other bugs. I remain steadfastly convinced that anybody who uses BcacheFS is expecting it to be experimental. They had better make the RC release candidate fixes be pure fixes. Signed off Linus. So for those of you unaware, BcacheFS is a modern copy on write file system, also known as COW, and it's designed to perform like ext4 or, or xfs and has advanced features commonly found in more modern file systems like butterfs or zfs and the lead developer and maintainer here of bcachefs has had a rocky history with linus as there's long-standing friction between the two as ken has been often criticized for not following the standard kernel development workflows and in the past He's been criticized for poor test coverage, sparse or hard to review commits, and just an overall reluctance to adhere to the standards set forth by Linus. But regardless, this is just the mere beginnings of what actually unfolded. We're going to keep moving on here. As a reply from Kent to Linus on the you seem to have forgotten what the point of the merge window was again, Kent says the goal is to get users code that works, is it not? And then to the second half where... Lena said, I remain steadfastly convinced that anybody who uses BcacheFS is expecting it to be experimental. Honestly, most people using BcacheFS, from, from what I've seen, just want something that works. There's a lot of people who've been burned by ButterFS. I've been seeing more and more people in recent discussions talking about unrecoverable file systems with ZFS, which Kent probably could have avoided arguing back and forth with Linus, but this really seems like a deflection, bringing other file systems into the conversation when it was never about other file systems. Instead, it was mainly about how Kent was not adhering to the rules for release candidates, as we'll see here in a moment. And this may be what set Linus off. As Kent continues, the last one has been a surprise to me. And I don't think it's anything to do with the quality of code, but it honestly should serve as a wake-up call to how much is falling through the cracks and how badly we've been failing. There are still a lot of people who don't want to move off of VXT4 and I can't really blame them. If you go looking, you won't find those stories about BcacheFS except for me when I'm telling people what to watch out for. And that's because of a lot of hard work. And because I'm dead set on not repeating past mistakes, I actively hunt down bug reports and I frequently tell people I don't care if you think it's a hardware issue or a pebcac, which just means problem exists between chair and keyboard or the, aka the operator. It's the file system's job not to lose data. Get me the info I need and I'll get it sorted out and get it working again. That's the goal here, delivering something that the users can trust and rely on. I'm not seeing that you get that. Again, Linus was just trying to firmly remind Kent that new features should not be added during the release candidate phase. And then this all led into a back and forth again between Linus and Kent. Kent, of course, defended his approach, citing that this urgent recovery tool is needed for real users of file systems and this is where the core conflict starts to unfold. But before we get to that, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux videos like this. YouTube can get finicky. Also, make sure to smash that like button on the way back up. It's about to get really interesting. As all of a sudden, Linus decided to actually accept the pull request. As we see this message from a bot, the pull request you sent on Thursday, the 19th of June, 2025, at this time, has been merged into the Torvalds Linux dot git thank you d2 dot i'm a bot 
Interestingly, out of the blue, we kind of see Linus pull this in for the 6.16 release candidate three. So you would think things are going okay. Well, that's where you would be wrong. As just to show, this is a pull request that's being referenced as a merge. So you can see here that this merge tag was created and we can see what was added, including that new option journal rewind, which was really what bugged Linus. So why would he have added this new option in after telling Kent that it was a no-go and especially after remaining quiet because we didn't actually hear from Linus all the way up to this merge. So then later we actually get a message from Linus. This is where things really start to get interesting. Per the maintainer thread discussion and precedent in XFS and ButterFS for repair code in RCs, journal rewind is again included. So it looks like some discussions may have taken place behind the scenes that we're not quite privy to but Linus does make this statement. I have pulled this, but also as per that discussion, I think we'll be parting ways in the 6.17 merge window. What a blow, as I think this can only be read one way. I believe Linus is trying to say that BcacheFS may be pulled back out or removed from the kernel. And he continues on saying, you made it very clear that I can't even question any bug fixes and I should just pull anything and everything. Honestly, at that point, I don't really feel comfortable being involved at all. And the only thing we both seemed to really fundamentally agree on in that discussion was we're done. Signed off Linus. This here is pretty telling as there's a clear fundamental difference between their two philosophies and how they've been approaching things when it comes to the kernel programming. As this seems to be a loss of trust from Linus as he no longer seems to want to collaborate with Kent, nor does he feel safe pulling Kent's patches. It seems like Linus finally is saying that he does not think Kent respects the way that the kernel development process takes place and seemingly is hinting that they'll be parting ways or one could only assume removing BcacheFS during the 6.17 merge window. Now we haven't heard explicitly here whether, whether Linus is planning on the removing BcacheFS. It could also just mean freezing future merges, but he seems to be signaling one, if not both scenarios. This is really wild, as this is a very rare thing to occur in Linux. This public declaration of following out is very interesting as it involves a critical new file system, a maintainer with a long history, and the wildest one is a split without using any profanity here by Linus, which is kind of funny, as it just seems like he's really just fed up, doesn't want to deal with it, almost a tone of defeat. As we've seen BcacheFS have different spouts, as I've covered in multiple videos before, definitely go check those out if you're interested in some more drama. But this one feels like a potential end, at least for the relationship between the two or even the breakdown of trust. Let's see what reaction takes place after this. But if you want to level up your own Linux experience today, download my checklist, cheat sheet, and mind map, all with new flashcards available today at SavvyNick.com. Let's see Kent's response to this. Linus, I'm not trying to say that you can't have a say in BcacheFS. Not at all. I positively enjoy working with you when you're not being a dick, but you can be genuinely impossible sometimes, a lot of time. When BcacheF is getting merged, I got comments from other file system maintainer that were pretty much great. We finally have a file system maintainer who can stand up to Linus. And, and having been on the receiving end of a lot of venting from them about what's going on and more that I won't get into, that seems a little ominous, I don't want to be in that position. I'm just not going to have any sense of humor where user data integrity is concerned or making sure users have bug fixes they need. Like I said, all I've been wanting is for you to tone it down and stop holding pull requests over my head as the place to have that discussion. You genuinely have good ideas and you're bloody sharp. It is fun getting shit done with you when you're not battling. But you have to understand the constraints people are under, not just myself. This message explains Kent's perspective and frustrations, although some of it is a little confusing or maybe cryptic in saying and more that I won't get into, dot, 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 leading us on. But the overall message seems to break the usual tone of kernel mail exchanges, especially from someone like Kent. He can often seem stubborn or even confrontational, which is fine. In this message here, he does admit to enjoying genuinely working with Linus, despite their clash or differences. He references some conversations with other maintainers, implying maybe shared stress. He also reveals personal discomfort and not just technical frustration. He's still trying to keep a bridge built 
between Linus and himself, as the Linux space, of course, especially when it comes down to kernel programming, is more of a space for technical precision. It's a rare moment where we kind of see somebody saying, hey, I care, meet me halfway, but is it too late? Well, let's keep going. As another person chimes in, Kyle, and it's actually in response to Linus as well. Linus, the pushback on Rewind makes sense. It wasn't fully integrated and was file system check code written to fix problems that were in retail 6.15 release. This looks like it slipped through Kent's continuous integration system and there was indeed multiple people hit by it, myself included. Quoting someone back to themselves is not cool. However, I believe it highlights what has gone on here, which is why I am breaking my own rule. One of the things I liked about the Rust side of the kernel was that there was one maintainer who was clearly much younger than the most maintainers, and that was the Rust maintainer. We can clearly see that certain areas in the Linux kernel bring in more young people. At the maintainer summit, we had clear division between file system people who are very careful and very staid and care deeply about their code being 100% correct because if you have a bug in the file system, the data on your disk may be gone, so these people take themselves and their code very seriously. And then you have the driver people who are a bit more okay, especially the GPU folks where anything goes. You notice that the driver's side, it's much easier to find young people and traditionally how we've grown a lot of maintainers. Kent is moving like the older days of rapid development, fast and driven, and the style of Clash is a mature, stable file system culture and demands extreme caution today. Almost every single patch has been in response to reported issues. The primary issue here is that the that's on the IRC where his younger users are not so young anymore. It is not TikTok and not on LKML, the Linux kernel mailing list. The pace of development has kept up and the new feature part of it, like changing out the entire hash table in RC6, seems to have stopped. This is a still experimental and he's moving that way now with care and continuing to improve testing coverage with bug. Kent has deep technical experience here much earlier in an interview regarding the 6.7 merge window. This file system has been in the works for a decade. Maintainership means adapting to kernel process as much as it means code quality. That may be closer to the issue here. If direct pulls aren't working, maybe a co-maintainer or routing changes through a senior file system maintainer can help. If you're open to it, maybe that is even you. Dropping bcashfs now would be a monumental step backward from the file systems we have today. Enterprise simply do not use them for true storage at scale, which is why vendors have largely taken for this space. The question is how to balance a rigor with supporting new maintainers in the ecosystem. Everything Kent has written around supporting users is true and publicly visible, if only to the 260 users on IRC and however many more on, are on Matrix. There are plenty more that are offline. And while this is experimental, there are a number of public sector agencies testing this now. I have seen reference number to emergency service providers, which isn't great, but for whatever reason, they are doing that. And we get a reference here, signed off Kyle. Mainly it seems like this user here is trying to argue to keep BcacheFS around, but it doesn't exactly address any of the core issues that Linus raised, including Ken's refusal to engage in open reviewable collaboration, Linus's discomfort with how the maintainership dynamic is going, and the loss of trust that he has in Kent with the decisions that he keeps making. What it does well is it shows Kent's behavior is not malicious. He also suggests that there's a potential to compromise here and emphasizes how bcashfs is valuable. But the core problem here is the trust and the breakdown of that process. The fact that Kent's style is fast moving innovation that clashes with the Linux kernel development process in itself. As Linus expects some core tenants from kernel developers and maintainers, everything must be open to review, pull requests must be clean, bounded, and appropriate, the devs must be in the spirit of collaboration, code must be proven safe, especially in core areas like files. We cannot break user space, aka no regressions, and a few more as he fiercely protects the collaborative core of the Linux kernel's development culture. And it seems like Kent has just violated too many of those too many times. As we didn't actually see a new response from Linus. Linus has remained quiet. Instead, we saw one last reply from Kent to Kyle. Thanks. Also, I think I should add, in case my words in the private conversations were misinterpreted, I don't think bcashfs should be dropped from the kernel. I think it would be better for this to be worked out. I firstly want to reassure people that if bcashfs has to be shipped as a DKMS module, that will not kill the project. It will be a giant hassle, especially if distributions have to scramble, but life will continue. I remain committed as ever 
to getting this done one way or another. And I think it's safe to say that going that route would be better option for the sanity of myself and Linus, but it wouldn't be better option for the users or the rest of the development community. With that, I'm going to take a breather. And this is quite a big deal as it seems like Kent is going to step back for a moment and really pleading for Bcash FS not to be dropped from the Linux kernel. We don't know what's going to happen yet. Linus did say that at 6.17, we're going to see some sort of a change. Even Kent here seems like it might be removed or dropped. Kent does acknowledge here that things have gotten tense and possibly even personal, assuring his users that Bcash will still be available even though it becomes a hassle to get it as it becomes an out of tree DKMS module, and especially for any distributions that currently use it. He's still committed one way or another to Bcash FS, as we all knew Kent would be. He also believes that even though he acknowledges it probably is best if that's the way they went with in between Kent and Linus, that the rest of the community would actually most likely benefit from actively being developed in the kernel still. So just a small recap, Kent submitted fixes, including a new recovery feature called Journal Rewind. Linus did end up pulling that patch, but was extremely upset with how Kent handled the review and collaboration process seemingly. And with that, Linus publicly stated that they'll be parting ways in the 6.17 merge window. So until then, it looks like BcacheFS might have a short remaining time in the Linux kernel. It also looks like Kent is gonna take a step back. Maybe there'll be some conversations in the background that we won't see, but overall the community sentiment on this one is frustrated and tense. A lot of the community is wondering what should take precedent, that adherence to the kernel process and guidelines or fixing real problems as fast as possible and getting it to users. Either Kent's gonna to have to adjust his approach to development in the Linux kernel, or there's gonna be a special carve out in the rules for experimental code. I wanna know what you think in the comments section below. This may be a big blow to be CacheFS users. I wasn't thinking I would be making a video on this type of drama, but nonetheless, I'm going to be following this through. So if we get more information, expect another video. And you wouldn't want to miss that one, so make sure you subscribe below and then smash that like button to get this out to more people. What a wild ride we took today. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. You're a true fan. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.